Good morning. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. <clears throat> it's uh, February 5th, uh, 2011. And it's 8.07 Central Time. And the temperature is 24 degrees and it's supposed to get to 42 degrees today, which will be excellent because we can uh, get rid of that snow and ice out there. I've made some videos on it, so I won't go into the situation with the, with the weather here in Fort Worth, but uh, let me just say that they don't bother to get rid of the snow and ice. They just wait for it to melt, and it's been four or five days. I uh, wanted to comment about a couple of things. One of them, I don't know how long it's been around. I just discovered it. Uh, Google Health, and I think a lot of you probably are not going to want to use this and uh, enter your information into it, but uh, I do because I think it'd be really useful to me. You know, you can enter your uh, your medical problems. You know, I've got enlarged prostate and gallstones and hypertension. I guess I should put arthritis in there too. And you can uh, list your medications, and then it tells you if there's, you know, if a possible problem. There's a place for test results, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's really going to be useful because then I can go one place to enter the information, blood pressure, and I've been writing that down on, you know, on a piece of paper and taking it to the doctor's office with me. And, and uh, I just think it's going to be useful. My insurance company has a thing like that, but it's not nearly as good. It's uh, harder to put the information in, harder to get the information back, and everything. So I think this is really going to be nice. And this is uh, Google Health, and it's part of um, their whole, you know, Google Mail, Google Calendar, Google Maps, all that kind of stuff. So let me shut that down. Uh, this is my blog, showmeblog.com. I mentioned about Google Health. I mentioned about the weather. Picture I took uh, yesterday. This is what I, an image I captured off the TV screen the other day, yesterday. The other thing, I mentioned it the other day it's an application for Android phones. And it also works on your computer. You can load it a, a, the same program, not well, not the same app, but you know, the same thing on your computer. So it would be much easier for me to show it to you on the computer than it would be me trying to hold this phone up. So going to do that now and it's it's for amateur radio operators licensed amateur radio operators you have to be to to use it it's echo link and um, this is a list for one for the five call area this is a list of the amateur radio operators who are connected or running Echolink right now. And it's also uh, ham radio repeaters that are up and running right now. And with this, now I could, it doesn't, I could, I could pick the, the uh, zero area and find now here's a repeater in Kansas City, Missouri where I'm from. In fact, let's give it a try here. This may not work. <laughs> it may not recognize my microphone. I just switched my microphone around, but I'm going to give it a try. N0 UWI N0 UWI monitoring. Now the repeater. Welcome to the KCRW 
Now that was the animated voice of the repeater, the amateur radio repeater in Raytown, Missouri. Now repeaters are transceivers, radios, receivers, and transmitters, uh, usually located up high where the antenna is up high, maybe on top of a water tower, on top of a tall building, up top, top of a television antenna. And amateur radio operators with their mobile units in their cars or with their handy talkies can, you know, like with a handy talkie using running about five watts, you can uh, talk and go into the repeater. The repeater then rebroadcast it out with its power of 20 watts or 50 watts or 100 watts or whatever over their antenna high up so you can be talking. But what's neat is these are connected together. Now nobody came back to me, but they're connected together. So if you're an amateur radio operator, I just logged in and transmitted over the air. That's why you have to have a license. I had to give my call sign. You can I could log into, I could go to a repeater in Moscow or uh, New York City or Tokyo and log into their repeater. But what's neat now is with Android phones, and there again you have to be an amateur radio operator, you install the application on your, your phone and I could use this. I can pull up a list just like is on the screen here. And uh, over here are countries by the way, I don't know if you can see that or not. but. I could uh, do the same with this. I could pull up a list of, I could pull up this repeater that I'm logged into now and let me log out of it. Uh, well, let me not log out of it right now. Um, I may just stay logged into it today. Um, so this is, I don't think I've given you a full idea of this, but it's a pretty neat application for amateur radio operators and that just so many possibilities. When, as, as, a, as an example, when I was um, in Kansas City, Missouri and working a hospital security, a little hospital or whatever, uh, sometimes I'd go out at midnight, two or three o'clock in the morning with my handy talkie, my amateur radio, out to the parking lot and on very low power, less than a watt, I would log in to, I would check into a repeater that was in Overland Park, Kansas and it was connected then by phone line, by an actual phone line uh, to Washington DC to a repeater there and so I would log into that repeater and uh, be announced, you know, in Washington, D.C. And I quite a few times talked to somebody who was driving through Washington, D.C. in their car. And we would talk and be, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning for them, 3 o'clock in the morning for me. I'd be on my handy talkie in the greater Kansas City area. And now these, and these, there are other networks other than uh, Echo Link that do things like this. So it's pretty neat. Now... I'm not suggesting you go out and get your amateur radio license because just so you can do this because uh, you know with us using the internet and the World Wide Web or whatever we do we do stuff like this uh, we can all do stuff like this without being a licensed amateur radio or, you know using Skype and uh, all the different services available but if you're an amateur radio operator this is a pretty neat little you know application. What else did I let me minimize this and bring up the browser again and see if there's anything else I want. I think that's probably it. Let me. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to? Oh, just wanted to mention this. Uh, I've got a Sony camera. I've had it for for quite a while, I think a year or so, maybe longer. And I just got around to installing the software that came with it. You know, I, I probably most of you the same way. The software that comes with these cameras, I don't even bother to install. I just took the camera 
and move the files over from the you know from the from the camera but I installed a software and it's it's uh, pretty nice I forget what it's called uh, PMB that sounds like something a woman might have every month or something I don't know but I installed it and it's pretty nice software so I guess not all that software is bad anyway thank you very much for uh, watching the video